If you're visiting with us today, welcome to Delphi Baptist Church. We're glad to have you. And continuing on with uh, what Jimmy said about his uncle, those of you been praying from rain, stop it! We don't need any more. We got enough. Also, you might notice that Ben Del Pozo is not sitting in the back today. Ben is in the hospital, and he's in very serious con uh, condition. Continue to pray for his health. Uh, Dahlia tells us that uh, he's been on breathing tubes, and she tells me that they're going to try to take those tubes out today. So be, be, be in prayer that uh, he'll be able to breathe on his own. A few weeks ago, Linda and I were attending a farewell dinner for Pastor Eric from over at the Lutheran Church. He's moving on up into the Lutheran hierarchy, and so he's not going to be over at that church anymore. We were sitting uh, at the table with his next-door neighbors, and we began talking, and uh, his neighbor expressed to me how fearful he was for the things, how the things are going in this world. I think there may be many people who have those same feelings. Many of you, even here today, may be fearful of how the world looks today. I'm speaking on a topic today that we really need to hear because we all struggle with fear at some time in our lives. I heard a story about a man who always stopped 50 feet back from a railroad uh, crossing. If the, guard, if the guard was down, he always stopped 50 feet back just in case the train tipped over when it was going by. Fear comes in all sizes and shapes. Some people are afraid of flying. Others, afraid of driving. Some are afraid of heights. Others, afraid of caves. I guess my biggest fear, next to preaching, is snakes. I don't like snakes. Snakes give me the willies. I don't care if they're little snakes, big snakes, non-poisonous snakes. I don't like snakes. Some people have weird fears, like the person I read about that was afraid of broccoli. So what is your fear today? What are you afraid of right now, today? Today we're continuing on our series of Standing on the Promises of God. We've talked about the promise of eternal life. We've talked about the promise of answered prayers. And we talked about God's promise of peace. If you haven't already guessed today, we're going to be talking about God's promise of his presence in our lives today. The good news, there's no homework today. <laughs> Amen. His presence should remove any fears that we have. Last Sunday, we learned that the antidote for anxiety is the peace of God. Today, our text teaches that the solution to fear is the presence of God. Here's the main point. The Lord will never leave those who belong to him. Never. We could also say it like this. Because God is here, we should have no fear. Our text for today is found in Isaiah 41.10. It says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up in my victorious right hand. Now, that's a verse that you need to stand on. Because first, he tells us what not to do. Don't be afraid or be discouraged. This verse gives us two commands to obey. Don't be afraid and don't be discouraged. And then he gives us two reasons to obey those commands. God is with us and he is our God. Then he gives us the promises. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you in my victorious right hand. Those are promises of God. Now, if we look at the whole 41st chapter of Isaiah, we see that, that God is promises, promising to bring his people back from captivity. The crazy thing is, Isaiah is writing about what will happen 180 years in the future. 
even before God's people sinned and, that they were, and they were judged, they were sent to Babylon for 70 years. God's telling them that they will return and that he will bless them once again because he is a gracious and loving God. Isaiah has been referred to as the Bible in miniature because it has 66 chapters. The Bible has 66 verses. The first 39 chapters correspond with the Old Testament. and they, uh, As they speak of judgment and the final 27 chapters echo the New Testament's uh, emphasis on grace, comfort, and restoration. These chapters were written to afflicted people who were filled with fear. Listen to the tone in this uh, selection found in Isaiah 40, 1 and 2. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. God still speaks tenderly to those going through trials and troubles today. And he offers comfort to the discouraged, the dismayed, and the hurting, and the helpless. See, God promises his presence in order to free us from fear in our families, our jobs, our lack of jobs, in the middle of a marriage crisis, with our school stresses, with our health situations, with our friendships, our finances, problems of the past, problems about the future, or any other situation you find yourself in. In his new book, Unshakable, Unshakable Hope, that we have in our bookstore out there, Max Licato talks about our soul and how it makes us different from other animals. He says, because of your soul, you wonder where you're going. You wrestle with right and wrong. You value the lives of others, and you get choked up at the singing of the national anthem. <clears throat> and teary-eyed at the sight of your baby. He points out that our soul is fragile in need of an anchor. Hebrews 9, or 6, 19 tells us where that anchor is found. It says, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain to God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us, the anchor is found only in the presence of Christ. The word fear comes from the word phobos, which, is, which initially had the meaning of flight or, feel, or fleeing. Instead of fleeing from our fears, Isaiah says, to use a, uh, gives us a formula to help us to face our fears. First, we can live without fear because God is with us. Notice it doesn't say that God was with us or that he will be with us, but that he is with us today, today. Don't be afraid can be translated as there's nothing to fear because I am with you. Folks, in order to face your fears, we have to remember that God is with us. Moses needed this reminder. Exodus 33, 14 says that, the Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. We all know that Psalms 23, 4 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for, those, for you are close beside me. How can you be fearful when the creator of the universe is beside you? After giving the Great Commission, which involved going and making disciples and teaching and baptism, Baptizing, Jesus promised his presence in Matthew 28, 20. He says, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Fear comes from Satan. And when you're filled with fear, remember this truth and speak it out loud. I will have no fear because he is here. The problem for most of us is that we forget about his presence as we stumble through life, oblivious to the fact that he's with us and he will never leave those who belong to him. If you're filled with fear today, it may be because you're acting like Jesus is not there. Declare this truth first. 
I will live without fear because God is with me. Let's look at the second part of the formula for overcoming fear. I will not be discouraged because he is my God. To be discouraged means to be broken and to be filled with fear. It literally means to look around anxiously as one does in a state of alarm. Would you notice that the key to not being discouraged is to make sure that he is your God? Sometimes things just don't work out right, and we allow discouragement to creep in. There's a story in 1 Samuel that tells about a time when David and his uh, 600 soldiers returned home from the battle to find their hometown burned to the ground, and everyone that lived there had been taken captive. His men were so distressed that they were talking about stoning David. But it all changed when David said, I found strength in the Lord my God. Is he your God? Is Christ your God? Can you say that today and mean it? His promise becomes activated when you personalize your relationship with him by trusting in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. I'm convinced that if each of us would see God as big and grand as he really is, most of our fears would go away because when we fear God, we don't fear other things. To expand your view of the Almighty, Isaiah 40 and 41 is something you need to read this week, the whole, both chapters. Here's a sampling from Isaiah 40.10. It says, yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will, he will rule with a powerful arm. Verse 15 says, surely the nations are like a drop in the bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. We can live without fear because God is with us. And we don't have to be discouraged because he is our God. You can use these two promises to be able to say, I will lean on God to strengthen me. I love what Corey Ting Boom once said. She said, in times of fear, I don't wrestle, I nestle. Psalm 29, 11 tells us, the Lord gives his people strength. The Lord blesses them with peace. I find great comfort in the prophecy found in Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 3, about the coming Messiah. It says, Look at my servant, my servant whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I've put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed, but put out or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wronged. This passage is again re repeated in the New Testament in Matthew 12, 20, when he's referring to Jesus. Jesus does not break us when we're broken, and he does not smash us when we're smoldering. I will trust God to help me because God is always present, and his promises never end. He promises his strength to us. After being reminded that the Lord will never leave us or forsake us, Hebrews 13, 6 says, The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? I see that there's a new show coming this fall on TV called God Friended Me. I hope it's a good show, but I don't have much hope. That begs the question, if God friended you, could he unfriend you? I unfriended someone the other day because they put something up that I found offensive on my, on my timeline. But God will never unfriend you, never. When we do something stupid 
or when we sin or when we get stressed out, he promises to help us. Our scripture today says that God will uphold me in his righteous right hand. The word uphold means to hold or grasp or to support. The idea is similar to the word undergird, which means to make secure underneath. We're upheld by his righteous right hand. This is the hand of promise. You ever feel like you've failed? Do you ever wonder why so many times we fail? Hold on to the promise that he upholds you when you feel like you're barely hanging on. Psalm 145, 13 reminds us of this. The Lord always keeps his promises. He's gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. He helps us and he holds us, even when we're shaken like a leaf. The Lord will never leave those who belong to him. Because God is here, we should have no fear about anything. God upholds the hurting and he reveals his presence through his people who reach out for his love. That means most of you. You are in the hands, you are the hands and feet of Jesus to proclaim the promise of his presence to those who are hurting. In the Old Testament, Testament, God's promise was demonstrated in the tabernacle. That's where people would go to meet with God. When Jesus came, John 1, 14 says, So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. He was sent from the presence of the Father, and he is the presence. And then he takes us into the presence of the Father when, he, when we put our faith in him for forgiveness of our sins. Let me repeat. Fear not. God is with you. He is your God. He will strengthen you. He will help you. And he will uphold you. I like how pastor and fellow Chattanoogan, John Piper, restates these promises using five different positions. He says, I am your God over you. I am with you by your side. I will strengthen you from inside you. I will help you all around you. And I will uphold you from underneath you. God is over you, by you, inside you, around you, and underneath you, even when a train is about to tip over on you. Folks, I have to level with you today. If you're not in Christ, and you've not made, you've not been made righteous, and you have every reason to be fearful today, None of these promises that we've talked about today are for you. None of those. You're on your own. But I have good news. You don't have to stay that way. If you've not been born again, that's the decision that you need to make today. Profess him as your Lord and Savior, and then the promise of his presence will be fulfilled in your life. Not only that promise, but all of the other promises that we've been talking about and even the rest of the promises that you will find when you start digging into your Bible. Remember, God cannot lie. And a promise is a promise. Will you pray with me today? Gracious Lord, first of all, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you 